So some action this morning in Columbia, South Carolina on the Murdoch Murders True Crime Saga, a story which has captivated the attention of the entire nation. It revolves around 53-year-old attorney Alec Murdoch of Hampton, South Carolina, his family, and the influential law firm founded a century ago. Now, Murdoch is at the center of a, an alleged web of criminal activities, the focus of at least seven state criminal investigations, multiple civil lawsuits. He is currently facing more than 50 charges in connection with those lawsuits, which could put him in jail for 500 years. Uh, and he's accused of defrauding millions of dollars from former clients, some of them friends. Murdoch appeared this morning at a virtual hearing held by South Carolina Circuit Court Judge Allison Lee. Our readers will remember we addressed Judge Lee uh, in a clip last week. We'll return to her in a moment. But Judge Lee granted Murdoch bond in the amount of $7 million on the uh, latest round of charges he's facing from the South Carolina statewide grand jury. Uh, the conditions of those bond are pretty severe. First of all, it's a surety bond. It's not a personal recognizance bond. Uh, and in typical surety bonds in South Carolina, a surety bond basically means you have to put up some money in the event you default on the conditions of your bond. Uh, and in typical cases, uh, a 10% uh, deposit, if you will, is required on those bonds. So if you get a $7 million bond, you need to put up at least $700,000. Well, Judge Lee was having none of that today. She told Murdoch's attorneys, Dick Harpootlin and Jim Griffin, you're going to put up every penny of it. No 10%. So if Alec Murdoch wants to get out of jail, he's going to have to pony up $7 million. Does he have it? Well, that's the $7 million question. Uh, Murdoch has plenty of assets, as this news outlet has uh, uncovered over the course of our investigation, including many assets that were previously unknown to the public. Uh, will he be able to tap those assets and, and make bond? We will find out soon. Now, Murdoch's attorneys, including Dick Harpootlin and Jim Griffin, were very disappointed by Judge Lee's ruling today. Uh, Harpootlin claimed his client was impecunious, which is a $10 word for very poor or dirt poor. Uh, and once again, we will find out whether or not that's the case uh, when we see whether Murdoch is able to post bond or not. Now, let's return to Judge Lee for a moment. Readers of this website will recall that last week we were a bit harsh on her in the lead up to this hearing, pointing out that she has a reputation for excessive leniency when it comes to setting bond, particularly for violent offenders or alleged violent offenders. In this case, she was not so lenient. The uh, $7 million bond, very high bond amount, was well above what the state sought. That was $2 million, and certainly above anything that was discussed during the bond hearing. So uh, again, Judge Lee, obviously, either sensitive to those allegations and wanting to send a message, or this was simply what her take of the situation was. But again, a very high bond amount, and once again, insisting on 100% payment. Now, the hearing was not without controversy. Judge Lee issued an order at the very beginning of the proceedings that prohibited members of the media from live streaming the event uh, to their audiences. In fact, not only did she prohibit live streaming of the event, but the judge told us that anyone sharing audio or video or still pictures of the proceedings would be held in contempt of court. Uh, again, for a high profile hearing like this, that's not a lot of transparency, and it was a bit disappointing uh, not only for members of the media covering this case, but also the public, uh, which obviously has a voracious appetite when it comes to all things Murdoch. Now, the bond hearing was also newsworthy because it marked one of the first times that we got to hear directly from Alec Murdoch. The attorney was allowed to address Judge Lee, and he told her that he was feeling better than he has in many months, that he was in better health than he's been in. He certainly appeared contrite. Uh, wanted to restore his reputation to the extent that he's able to do so. There's not a specific apology in his remarks, but he certainly appeared contrite in an effort to get his bond reduced and get out of the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center, which is where he's been held, again, since October. I'd like to remind readers Fitz News broke this story back in early June, and we have broken all the major developments in the case since then, or the vast majority of them. So I would encourage readers watching this clip to tune in to FitzNews.com. Our news director, Mandy Matney, and executive editor, Liz Farrell, have a wonderful piece up today with all the details on the bond hearing. You can check it out at FitzNews.com.